Hey everyone, I'm Kunal Kishwa, field CTO at SIBO. I'm here at Grafana Con. It's uh, day two and it's been packed. Quite exciting, a lot of announcements. I quite like the showcase area, which had a lot of cool demos. Um, that's why I go to conferences to you know, meet people, to see things in action. Um, I'm here joined by Tokel, uh, who is the creator of Grafana. So we're going to talk a little bit about Grafana and the ecosystem. But before that, how's your experience been at this conference? No, it's it's great. Uh, first time in Seattle. Uh, I, I really like this this venue, uh, and uh, it's been really great. Sort of meeting, meeting users, talking to sort of what they are excited about uh, in in the, in the coming release and what we've been showing and talking about. Yes, my first time in Seattle as well. I think one of my favorite cities now in the U.S. Um, yeah, great weather as well, which was. Interesting because people are telling me that it's going to be rainy or whatnot in Seattle usually. So we're very lucky to have very good weather as well. But speaking of Grafana, take us back to the beginning. So you're the creator. When you first built Grafana, what problem were you really trying to solve? And did you imagine it would become the foundation for an entire company? Like the, the problem I was trying to solve was really uh, making a, a metrics. Can we, we started using Graphite and, and uh, I was really... I felt really fell in love with like graphs and live monitor, like being able to visualize the state of the application that we were uh, we were building or my, many different services it was like a microservice architecture. Uh, so I really fell in love with like being able to visualize the state of that system as we were deploying, rolling out changes, uh, and also seeing kind of what the users were up to and see kind of the impact of a new change in real time in, in through these graphs. Uh, but uh, uh, I, got, I struggled a lot with getting other people on the team to also build dashboards and learn kind of how to do that, how to query the metrics, learn the query language, learn the tool, the dashboarding tool, uh, the Graphite dashboarding tool. Uh, so that was kind of the, the, the real kind of origin of, of and, and problem I was trying to solve. Okay, how, can, how can we make dashboarding easier? How can we make querying easier? Uh, so I took some inspiration and I kind of from, from Kibana, which was the dashboarding tool for logs at the time uh, and try to make uh, turn that into a metrics dashboarding tool uh, that really made it sort of easy without knowing the query syntax to build queries and without having to sort of write JSON mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or uh, uh, to build a dashboard in the UI. Uh, and I never kind of imagined that to turn into a company uh, initially, like the, the, there was just a, uh, something that would help me and my team to to uh, to build better dashboards and and for for and also for for me not to have to do it for for other teams and for other people on the team. Um, so and I'm, I've been really amazed by the fact that it's uh, um, grown the way it has and and it's being used for for in such a wide array of kind of different uh, use cases and applications. Yeah, and speaking of users and echoing your point, Grafana has always prioritized design and usability. So was that a conscious decision from the start or did it evolve naturally over time? As, as I saw uh, kind of ease of use as the biggest hurdle uh, with the default Graphite dashboard uh, or, the, or the existing dashboarding tools, uh, I really focused a lot on on kind of lowering the barrier of entry to to make it possible for anyone to kind of especially write queries, but also build dashboards. So I spent a lot of time making a query builder, uh, and also the other, the, other, the other kind of design uh, philosophy was, was uh, to make something that that looked beautiful and like exciting, fun. Uh, for something, something that would you would put want to put up on a TV on a wall and get people sort of excited. So I, I also spend a lot of time on like yeah, having a beautiful, dark, vibrant color theme that that uh, that really brought the data to life. So what you're saying is Grafana helped make metrics visual and accessible. So from the early era of observability, what's something like from that era that you think today's engineers have forgotten? <laughs> I mean, I, I think they've forgotten a lot uh, that, that is that, that is good to forget, like, like, like having to sort of log into to, uh, to different services to look at logs and and and, uh, and yes, being able to to uh, send like in a central location, be able to search logs from thousands of applications and servers and and, and look at metrics. Uh, yes, that that didn't used to be the case, or or the, the tooling to to do this was really bad. 
Um, so I, I'm not sure they've forgotten anything that was worth that, that sort of um, that was uh, that is needed in, in, in this day and age, where we have so much better observability tools. Um, so I don't think that comes to mind to sort of that 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 is a, that is a, it's sort of necessary today. I love that answer that people <laughs> forgot things that you know weren't now that important. Yeah. I think that's exactly what AI is doing in today's age as well. And we're going to talk about that because there were some announcements during the keynote. So when people say is AI going to make people obsolete or some specific tasks, tasks yeah. or whatnot, I think it's just automating or taking care of the tasks that might be mundane so you can focus on, well, there are so many problems to solve in the world. But speaking of Grafana 12, you know, it mm. seems like a major leap, especially with the observability as code. Um, so the whole now GitOps approach and the AI assistant. So what was the internal philosophy behind this release? Was it evolutionary or was it a conscious uh, reinvention? The, the the biggest difference I think with with Grafana 12 compared to any other release is that we, we finally sort of did some fundamental changes and started a, a, pro, a projects that that would take quite a, that took quite a long time. So the uh, starting with the, the kind of new a, versioned APIs and new sort of schema system that underlies the Git sync support and the and the observability as code support. Um, so that, that that process, like to, to get to, to a new, compl completely new kind of API architecture and resource architecture, storage architecture as well, has taken a long time. Um, uh, but it ha has enabled these new uh, features as well. Um, but but given that we took on these kind of big projects, that means that some of these new features, like the Git sync and the new kind of as code schemas. Uh, are not really kind of production ready. They are they're in experimental phase because we we, um, we we need to do some more work on them. Uh, so so that's the big thing. Like the Grafana, with, with the previous releases of Grafana, we have sort of bundled up features that have been out in preview for for a number of months and now kind of are generally available. In Grafana 12, uh, we have a bunch of exciting new features uh, to talk about and demo, but m many of them are experimental. There are some really cool things as well as, as was shown in, in the deep dive that are really generally available with the new managed alerts uh, and scheme and many other things as well. But the big kind of Git sync and as code and, and the new da dynamic dashboard features, uh, tabs and conditional rendering are all in an ex kind of experimental state right now. And we just need like a few, uh, a few more months to, to really make them generally available. But uh, but kind of having said that, this is by far the sort of most impactful things that we have done in uh, in many many years, and kind of sets up uh, sets Grafana up for um, sort of yeah really a fundamental new way of working with Grafana with Git sync and version resources and and yeah, everything that that kind of brings. Cool. Thanks for sharing. And yeah. Grafana Assistant, you know, yeah. it introduces AI into the traditional data heavy space. Yep. Um, in your mind, what's the right balance when you're using, let's say, when we're talking about AI tools, what is the right balance between human intuition and the machine guidance in observability? I, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a hard question, but uh, our, our philosophy with the AI assistant is really ab about kind of not automating completely everything that goes into sort of observability or monitoring, but uh, but really leveling up anyone to become an observability expert and to become a Grafana expert. So it's about kind of uh, turning uh, the, the years of knowledge it takes to kind of build beautiful dashboards or do effective root cause analysis. Uh, our goal is really to, to, to take that knowledge and, 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 uh, and let the sort of the, the AI assistant um, uh, help you along that and, and kind of guide you through that process. And so you don't have to sort of spend years knowing how to build beautiful dashboards or knowing the best best practice way of, of doing root cause an analysis. So it's it's really about yeah, leveling up every, everyone to become a Grafana expert or observability expert. And Grafana's open source roots 
run very yeah. deep, yeah. right? And as it's matured into a commercial product as well now, yeah. um, how do you ensure that the community still feels like um, co-owners of the project? It's a good question. I, I think like number one is, is, is an event like Graphonicon where we we have a really have a focus on open source. We don't kind of do a lot of promotions of, of our of our paid products, uh, but really emphasize everything we do in all our different open source projects. Um, but there are, uh, of course, sometimes we mention uh, sort of uh, cloud only features um, uh, and, and, and enterprise features, but there's a heavy focus on everything we do in open source, which is um, including kind of the Git integrations uh, support and, and other, th other things that are really there for everyone to take advantage of. And our philosophy around open source has always been like if, if a feature is something that most so small hobbyists or, or small companies want, could take, a, take benefit from, then it's an open source feature. So we're trying to sort of uh, stay true to that philosophy. Uh, and um, some features are, are cloud only, but that's mostly as for kind of technical reasons and, and because it's yeah, much easier and quicker for us to develop and, and, and get it into users' hand that way because it's, it's usually much harder to build sort of reliable, scalable on-prem software than, than, than for us to put, put up a feature in, in cloud. So building in open source, what's one thing that you wish people understood about uh, building enduring open source software in today's times? Because we often see like in the news, a company yeah. gets famous for yeah. something around open source, good or bad. So what's what's what are some other things that you wish people understood? Well, I, I think one one challenge uh, with building open source software and, and 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 the blessing is is the fact that anyone can contribute, and anyone can sort of come with ideas, and which is amazing. Uh, but it's also um, a challenge for me and others as kind of product managers or product uh, to to. And, and, and who cares about the product design or, or the evolution and long-term kind of maintainability of the product. So, so, uh, so it's always hard um, to sort of know if a contribution that adds a new feature is some, some, something we should accept or not. Uh, it's very hard when someone has put a lot of sort of work uh, into something. Um, but the, the problem we have there is like, we know that every new feature makes it a little bit maybe harder or more complex or hard and, and harder to maintain, maybe harder for new users, especially if it takes kind of screen real estate. So, so I think just being cognizant of that fact and that if you're starting a new complex feature, it's good to reach out to the kind of product mm -hmm. maintainers and see that is, is this something that is interesting? Um, and the, the way we have solved this problem in general as well is with making Grafana into a kind of plugins platform or a platform where that can be easily extended. Because that that uh, enables commun the community to really take the foundation and use Grafana and extend Grafana in ways that maybe wouldn't make sense to have in the core product. Uh, so they can just build a new data source or new new visualization plugin or a full app um, uh, and leverage kind of the the, the base functionality uh, without having to sort of try to get that feature into the into the core open source project. Amazing, well, it was great speaking yeah. with you. I just yeah. have one last question. What's the most unexpected or creative use case of Grafana you've seen out in the wild? Good question. Um, I mean, I, I think um, one, of, one of the yeah, craziest use cases is, is the fact that Grafana was being used for sort of landing, used so much in the space industry. Uh, so the, seeing the first time uh, that SpaceX landed their uh, uh, Falcon 9 ro ro rocket, seeing Grafana used in the command center there, and then seeing kind of uh, NASA and the, the Japanese space ag agency use Grafana to monitor their moon lander as it was kind of uh, descending uh, onto the lunar surface. I mean, you, that, that was not something I ever imagined Grafana being used for. Um, and, and there are so many kind of, <laughs> so many different instances of that.